Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edward III and today we get to hear from Lord Audley in Act 4, Scene 4. So up until now the war has pretty much been going in the favor of the English side. The English Navy was pretty much able to destroy the French Navy. The English were making significant headway as they moved across France just leaving sort of a trail of destruction. Um, they got to a certain place where they had a little bit of a standoff and some name calling between uh, King Edward III and King John of France and they decided we're going to go and have a battle and in that battle the English seemed to kind of sort of prevail and King John retreated a bit so King Edward sent Prince Edward and half of the troops to go follow uh, King John. Meanwhile King Edward and the other half of the troops went to Calais where we hear things are going pretty well again on the English side. They were laying siege to Calais and the the French decided finally that they were going to surrender the city and Edward's like, ha ha, no, too late. Your six wealthiest merchants need to come out naked and prostrate themselves in front of me and then I'll decide what I'm gonna do with them because you should have taken my offer to support your city when I first offered it, not now that you're all starving to death. We also have the Earl of Mountford who has sworn allegiance to King Edward. So uh, Valier went to get a passport from Charles, the Duke of Normandy, who is King John's eldest son, so that this message would be able to make it all the way back. So all of, all of that happened. But as Villiers was there trying to get this passport, and Charles is like, why are you going to go back and be his prisoner? Like, you're free now. Just run away. Villiers is like, no, it's an honor thing. So he gets the passport. He takes off to go back. But then we start to hear from the French that they have Prince Edward surrounded. And this has given the, the French a little bit of a boost and King John is actually feeling optimistic now. There's this, there's this prophecy that says that the French aren't going to be successful until these kind of crazy things happen. And King John interprets it like, no, 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 those things aren't going to happen. So therefore we are going to win and we're going to gain back everything that we lost and then some. So things are turning in our favor. So in Act 4, Scene 4, we start off with Lord Audley and Prince Edward, who are, in fact, surrounded. They're in a bit of a valley, and Pr Prince Edward is looking around, and he's like, this is, this is bad. I, I'm not quite sure, like, where did they all come from, and how did they get here so fast, and where are we supposed to go? And Lord Audley says, this sudden, mighty, and expedient head that they have made, Fair Prince, is wonderful. Before us in the valley lies the king, vantaged with all that heaven and earth can yield, his party stronger battled than our whole. His son, the braving Duke of Normandy, hath trimmed the mountain on our right hand up, in shining plate, that now the aspiring hill shows like a silver quarry or an orb, aloft the which the banners bannerets and new replenished pendants cuff the air and beat the winds that for their gaudiness struggles to kiss them. On our left hand lies Philip, the younger issue of the king, coating the other hill in such array that all his gilded upright pikes do seem straight trees of gold, the pendant leaves, and their device of antique heraldry quartered in colors seeming sundry fruits makes it the orchard of the Hesperides. Behind us, too, the hill doth bear his height, for like a half moon opening but one way, it rounds us in. There at our backs are lodged the fatal crossbows, and the battle there is governed by the rough Chatillon. Then thus it stands, the valley for our flight, the king binds us in. The hills on either hand are proudly royalized by his sons, and on the hill behind stands certain death in pay and service with Chatillon. So it's not, I don't know that this is a monologue that you would use for an audition or anything like that. It is nice and long, but basically he's just describing their situation. He's just telling us what's going on. He's saying that King John's army lies in front of them. Uh, Prince Charles, the Duke of Normandy, and his army has covered that whole hill. Prince Philip and his whole army has filled up that whole hill. And there's another guy named Chatillon who's filled up that whole hill. So they're in, he's, he's painting the picture of, they're in sort of this crescent-shaped 
valley and the only the only real way out would be to go forward where King John is and the hills all behind and around them are covered with French soldier, soldiers as well. So they're, he's not feeling very optimistic. He doesn't see a way out of this really and Prince Edward is going to have a response to this in tomorrow's monologue and we'll get to see just how just how happy the English are feeling at this point in the play. I'll see you tomorrow for that. Mwah.